This year's Nobel Prize in Economics is about how to fight poverty with economics and not just how to fight poverty, but how to improve education, how to improve health, how to improve agriculture, how to just change the world with economics. And it is a totally deserved prize. I'm excited to talk about it. Hi, I'm Craig and welcome to Mark Power. We are creating a community of people interested in and excited about economics. And the Nobel Prize announcement is a great time to get interested in economics and it is especially exciting time for economists. So in this video, I'm gonna explain why Abhijit Banerjee, Esther Duflo, and Michael Kramer won the Nobel Prize. Then I'm gonna give some examples of their work, which I think is inspiring. And then I'm gonna give you some critiques about why some people are gonna be upset about this prize, and then maybe see if they're justified. The announcement was at 3.45 this morning, and that's when I had to get up to be there to pay attention. And I was just a little concerned that I was gonna get this announcement and have no idea who these people were because they were working in a field totally separate from mine. This year's prize is about alleviating poverty. But as soon as they announced that this was a prize about fighting poverty, I started just going crazy because I knew exactly who had won. Abhijit Banerjee, Esther Duflo, and Michael Kramer. For their experimental ansats to mildra global. So the three winners of the 2019 prize are Abhijit Banerjee, Esther Duflo, and Michael Kramer. And let me just say, a full week before this prize was announced, a full week before today, I went out and I said on Twitter, here are the people I think are going to win the Nobel Prize. And at the top of my list was Esther Duflo. And I said she'd probably win it with people like Abhijit Banerjee and Michael Kramer. And as right, it is so hard to predict the Nobel Prize. It is so hard. And I'm not saying I had any secret sauce, but I'm pretty excited that I won it. And it's really exciting, especially with Esther Duflo, because as I said in one of the very first videos I made, Esther Duflo is this amazing economist who has done pioneering work in developing countries. Her work inspired me when I was an undergraduate. Esther Duflo has been a role model for me ever since I was an undergraduate. So it was really exciting to see her win. And not only is it exciting to see her win because she totally deserves it and has done amazing research, but historically this is a big moment she is the second woman to win the nobel prize in economics the first one was exactly 10 years ago another exciting reason for esther's win is that she is now the youngest person to ever win the nobel prize in economics she is 46 years old and her birthday is in a few weeks so she will be 47 but she won at 46. The previous youngest winner was Kenneth Arrow, who won when he was 51. So she's winning a full five years before the youngest winner before that. Coincidentally, Esther Duflo was born in 1972, which was the year that Kenneth Arrow won the Nobel Prize in Economics. So it was really exciting on lots of frontiers. A lot of people didn't think Duflo had this chance because she was so young. So why did these three win the Nobel Prize? It's really straightforward. They have really taken the method of randomized control trials or RCTs and brought it to the mainstream economics using it to test how to fight poverty in the developing world. You're probably familiar with RCTs from the medical research. What you do is you have a treatment. You know, you might say a medication in the medical world, or in this case, we have some policy where we wanna see how effective that policy is. And so we have a target group that we wanna treat. Now, we could just go out there and implement the policy with our belief that it could work, but we don't know if it's actually going to work and we don't know what causes it to work. Like why do these things come together to alleviate poverty or are they doing anything? Are, they, are Would the people be better off if they hadn't received that policy? And that's where Esther Duflo, Michael Kramer and Abhijit Banerjee come in because they have really pioneered the effort to figure out if these things work. So we have that treatment and instead of just giving to everybody, we do what they do in the medical research we find a group that we're interested in testing this policy on, and then we have a random assortment into treatment and control groups. Then we give one group, we randomly assign one of the groups to receive the treatment, or in this case, the policy, and the other group we just leave alone. And we watch how these groups evolve to figure out how is this policy going to work? 
And that's essentially it. It's a pretty simple technique and it's pretty intuitive once you think about it, but it hadn't been done before. People had not been going to developing countries to test these policies. And that's where these three come in. They go out there and they start testing policies with RCTs to help us understand how to fight poverty. And they look at it in all these different dimensions, education, health, agriculture, trying to figure out what we need to do to improve the lives of the poor. One of the reasons why this prize is totally deserved is because their work has influenced so much of the world and this academic work that's going on. Like we're seeing not just RCTs in developing countries, we've seen RCTs come here to the United States where we realize we should be testing out some of these policies. We're seeing it not just here in economics, even political science has been adopting RCT methods and we're seeing it go out to all these other fields as well. This has been a truly transformative work and they totally deserve this prize. So let me talk about the exciting work that they have done, some of the things that inspire me, some of the things that make me think about how economics can really be used to shape the world. And if you have other examples, let me know in the comments below. Banerjee and DeFlo have also done a lot of work in microcredit. Microcredit, I remember in high school, I had heard about this concept and it was supposed to be transformative, right? This idea that we are gonna give small loans to poor people and they're gonna be able to take that small amount of money and do large things with it. It's gonna have a huge effect. And for a long time, people just thought, this was the solution to global poverty. Well, Banerjee and DeFlo did a lot of work analyzing this through the RCT method and found that it just really wasn't that transformative. We weren't seeing big impacts coming from this. We weren't seeing negative impacts it didn't look like, but we weren't seeing big positive impacts either. Now this work has been recently updated. Banerjee and DeFlo just in the last few weeks released a paper where they looked at giving micro loans to those people who already had businesses. One of the problems is if you're giving loans to people who have never had a business before, you have lots of things that you have to resolve. So instead what they did is they went to people who already had businesses, gave them some loans, and then they found that there were really large effects from that, which is actually a really cool concept to think about that if you think about the marginal lender the people who just are about to get it and just aren't going to get it it's not gonna have that big of an effect because they're the kind of people that aren't sure if they need it in the first place but if you can target that to the people who have the highest impact the people who are already entrepreneurs you find that you have a much larger impact from microcredit and that's just a recent work I think it's gonna be a paper that does a lot to change the way we think about microfinance. Michael Kramer has a lot of really interesting work. He was cited in the Nobel announcement for his work at getting textbooks to people in developing countries and the effect of those textbooks on education. But I think a more influential work is his work on deworming. It turns out that in a lot of developing countries, you have these intestinal worms that can really eat away at a child's nutrition. The way to think about a worm is just like you have something else in you eating the food that you're eating. So when you eat, you're not getting 100% of that nutrition. And that can be a really big impact on education. So a lot of children in developing countries have intestinal worms and that affects their education because it makes it harder for them to go to school. Well, Michael Kramer, along with Ted Miguel, looked at a deworming initiative. Treating this is super, super cheap. It's just this really inexpensive pill that you need to administer to kill out those worms. And it's 100% effective, it's super easy to do. And so what they did is they went and looked at treating kids in developing countries and showed that when you treated these kids with this deworming pill, you had a large increase in education. And it had another effect that when you treat those kids, it actually affects the other kids around them. It's like an immunization because when you drop the incidence rate of worms, you end up having these spillover effects towards other people where you make them better off. And so this was this hugely beneficial program that they they realized had a huge impact. It was super cheap, it was having big impacts. And so they took this work and actually expanded it. They said like, let's go out there and make this instead of just an academic thing, let's make this a real policy. So they started the Deworm the World initiative and they went out and they've been treating, I think the numbers I saw were since 2012, more than six million children a year get deworming them and just this last year the number was something insane like 290 million children were being treated with deworming pills to improve their education and improve their health 
I mean, this kind of stuff is just exciting and inspiring to see economists going out there, not just talking about things that a lot of people are think are trivial or talking about money where we think that economists are just greedy, self-interested, grubbing, you know, money grubbing people. These are people going out and changing the world and making significant difference in the lives of the world's poorest. And that's why this work is so inspirational. It's why I think this is such a great year for the Nobel Prize. Now, this work is not without criticism. As I said, there is a little bit of controversy behind the work they do. One big critique of this is this, uh, you know, kind of this moral justification of whether it's even right to do an RCT. I think this is a weak criticism. You know, we're going out there. Usually, we have limited budgets. We uh, don't know if policies are going to work, and when we just go out there and blindly implement these policies, who's to know if we're actually helping these people? Any people we do help are those other, are other people we're not helping, right? Like this critique that by randomly giving the treatment to some people and withholding it from others, so that way we can measure to see if it works. I just don't think it's that legitimate of a critique because we need to know if it works. We need to know if we're actually helping the poor and if we're just wasting resources by you know, not helping, by doing something ineffective, like that's a moral thing that we need to worry about. We need to worry about where we're giving our money to the greatest need. And so I think the moral critique of uh, Banerjee to Flow and Kramer's work, I think it's a pretty, you know, it's like a straw man. Something that might be more serious is the way that they've pushed the field of development economics. Now, Banerjee, Duflo, and Kramer can be really credited with expanding the field of development economics. Before them, it had been a really small field. We weren't seeing that many people doing development economics. They have really pushed it forward and gotten a lot more people interested in development economics, including myself, as I've said. But as they said in the Nobel Prize announcement, development economics today is now a mostly experimental field. Like they are going out there doing experimental work. And a lot of people worry that this is pushed too far and that there are other things that we need to look at. Some things that are really important for development can't be subjected to an RCT. And this real push towards the RCT mentality has taken people away from other important fields of development economics. Like what I think is an important field is economic history. It's just really hard to do everything as an RCT. I A lot of times I see RCTs as poverty alleviation economics, not development economics. And that these are ways that we can make the lives of the poor a little bit better today. But how are we actually going to get to development? How are we going to bring these countries out of this world? Those kind of things probably aren't going to come in the RCT format. And so I think we need more focus on those big picture topics. And there are a lot of people who have this critique. But that doesn't mean that this prize isn't deserved. Like the RCT work is something that we needed. It has advanced the field. We are doing better work as a result. So it doesn't invalidate the work that they've done at all. I'm gonna put a lot of links in the description below if you wanna read about these three. And I'm also gonna put links to their books. They've got uh, great books that have already been written and books that are coming out. And also if you're interested in more things about the economics of the Nobel Prize, I did a video about this last week that has lots of fun details like who won the biggest prize and our Nobel Prize's tax.